Hello friends, in today's documentary, we will talk about Akhenaten, the last alien pharaoh of ancient Egypt who defied the gods. For more than 40,000 years, humans have worshipped imaginary supernatural entities and maintained their faith in the afterlife through culture-specific ceremonies. The gods may be considered immortal, but religions are mortal. A god is alive, ever-present, and immortal when people believe in him. But when people stop believing in him and stop worshipping him, praying and respecting him, he disappears, as if he never existed. Today, in the Afro-Eurasian and American world, 3.9 billion people, 2.2 billion Christians, 1.6 billion Muslims, and 14 million Jews, worship a signer of God. While 1 billion Hindus worship 33 million gods and 376 million Buddhists follow the path of the Buddha, while 394 million traditional Chinese worship more than 100 gods. For 3.9 billion people, God, Allah, Yahweh is the creator God of the universe, an immaterial, spiritual, omnipresent, omniscient, infinite, omnipotent, omnibenevolent and eternal entity, without beginning and end. But a few thousand years ago, this god was not even conceived in the imagination of our ancestors. Thousands of years ago, there were tens of thousands of gods who were worshipped and respected. Monotheism, the redemption of the existence of a single god, first appeared to the Egyptians when the sun was worshipped in the time of Pharaoh Akhenaten, but for a short time. It was the Jews who laid the foundations of a successful religion, Judaism. Later, toward the end of antiquity and the beginning of the Middle Ages. Two branches sprouted from the Abrahamic roots of Judaism, Christianity in the West and Islam in the East, religions that worship the same God but look at him from different angles. Faith in this God has definitely changed the course of history in the Afro-Eurasian and American space. Religious ceremonies were held, but wars were fought in the name of this God. Places of worship have been built in which he is honored and revered, and holy books have been written about the work of the gods. What would the world look like if this god had simply never been worshipped, the Abrahamic religions would not have existed, and the polytheistic religions would still exist? If the legendary personalities like Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad had not existed, would history have been different? Since man cannot live without believing in gods, surely ancient religions would have persisted or others would have been created. Akhenaten, the last alien pharaoh of ancient Egypt to defy the gods. According to official history, Akhenaten was a pharaoh of the 18th dynasty, 1379 to 1362 BC, who replaced the polytheistic religion of Egypt with a monotheistic system. Elevating the solar disk god Aten to the rank of the only god, of ancient Egypt. But according to several occultists, Akhenaten was the last alien ruler of ancient Egypt. However, he is one of the most mysterious pharaohs in Egypt, especially because of his physical features, such as an elongated skull, a long neck, thick thighs, long fingers and a very prominent belly. Ancient Egypt has one of the most incredible stories on the planet. And this applies not only to the amazing architectural achievements of the ancient Egyptians, but also to the unimaginable knowledge of various fields of science, an impressive feature of which very few ancient civilizations of the Earth can boast. The pyramids of Giza and the huge, majestic Sphinx are not the only secrets surrounding this civilization. The list of mysteries may include rulers, among whom Akhenaten holds a special place. Akhenaten known until the fifth year of his reign as Amenhotep IV, was the pharaoh of the 18th dynasty of Egypt who ruled for 17 years. He was the father of Tutankhamun, one of the most famous ancient kings of Egypt. Akhenaten is considered by many to be one of the greatest and most influential religious reformers. No joke, the first monotheist in the entire history of the earth, forerunner of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Muhammad, prophets who worshipped one god. The Palermo Stone contains another ancient text that mentions the mystical leaders of the pre-dynastic period. This star speaks of the ancient Egyptian god Horus and suggests that he is a real person and ruled in ancient Egypt thousands of years ago. 
another Egyptian god, Thoth, is said to have ruled the land from 8670 to 7100 BC. It should be noted that an interesting fact is that the Egyptian high priest Manetho, who had access to the Library of Alexandria, wrote a 30-volume history of ancient Egypt for Pharaoh. So it contains references to divine beings who ruled the country before the pharaohs. According to ancient Egyptian mythology, Akhenaten originates from the gods who came to earth during the time of Zep Tepi, and to this day people believe that this pharaoh came to our planet from the stars. As it is written in the texts of the pyramids, there was a time when the gods ordered the primordial chaos and began to rule the planet. Many scholars believe that the ancient Egyptian civilization appeared in 36,900 BC, when the gods who descended from heaven ruled the earth and Akhenaten was one of them. A heretical pharaoh, he showed Egypt a completely different religious life, in which there was no place for polytheism, there is one god and he is my father. I can come to him day and night. After becoming a pharaoh, he ordered the destruction of all the images of the previous gods. Akhenaten allowed only one symbol, the image of a circle with a sun snake and many rays pointing downwards with the man's hands at the ends. God Aten, or Disc of the Sun, as it was called in ancient texts, is also mentioned in the legend of Sinuhe, an ancient Egyptian story that takes place during the 12th dynasty. The king who died in this work ascended to heaven and, uniting with the solar disc, became the same deity as its creator. By analogy, the term, Silver Aten, has sometimes been used synonymously with the moon. During the reign of Amenhotep III, the Solar Aten was depicted as a falcon-headed man crowned with a solar circle and very similar to Ra. No less mysterious was the appearance, the structure of Akhenaten's own body. This served as food for all sorts of theories that Pharaoh was not a mere mortal, but an alien from heaven, the last alien king. An unusual shape of the head, an elongated skull, a long neck, deep eyes, wide hips, long fingers, twisted knee joints, a belly as big as pregnant women, and a breast as a woman, the list goes on. Most of all, it captures the elongated skull, we see this feature in all its images and statues. Pharaoh's body was a cross between a man and a woman. The least strange thing was this. Since all the other pharaohs were portrayed as strong, tall figures. Unlike them, Akhenaten looked like a weak creature with a disproportionately elongated head. Moreover, pharaoh's wife, Nefertiti, was depicted with the same skull shape. Was it some kind of genetic abnormality that caused their head and body to become disproportionate? Or maybe Akhenaten was only half-human, a hybrid of extraterrestrial genes and DNA. A new example of hidden history. Was the prophet Moses in the Bible the same person as the Egyptian pharaoh Akhenaten? If we want to learn more about the distant past of human history, we can draw on books such as the Bible or Sumerian texts. From there we can learn that in an extremely distant period the gods coexisted with humans. It seems so incredible that we can't believe it. Treating everything like mythology. What if everything was true? If everything was just a misinterpretation of real events then? Take, for example, Moses, whom the Bible describes as a great prophet. According to the Bible, the Jews came to Egypt because of the famine during the time of Joseph, a character from Canaan who had advanced to the rank of high dignitary at Pharaoh's court. For 430 years the Jews were prisoners of the Egyptians as slaves. During the reign of a pharaoh, who was identified by some as Seti I, pharaoh saw a demographic danger in the fact that the Jews multiplied too much and thus ordered that all Jewish male children be killed by drowning in the Nile River. However, it seems that only one child survived. The story goes that Johebed had given birth to her husband, Amram ben Kahat, a child she hid from Pharaoh's Egyptian soldiers. She put it in a tarred basket and let it float on the Nile. The basket was found by one of Pharaoh's daughters and her maids. The baby was named Moses. According to the same biblical tradition, Moses was raised and taught at Pharaoh's royal court as an Egyptian citizen. 
the eldest daughter of Pharaoh Seti I, who is thought to have been the one who found Moses in the water, is said to have given birth to Ramses according to some historians of ancient Egypt, who, according to these speculations, no less than Moses' younger, stepbrother. As a result, after these attempts at historical reconstruction, Moses should have become the pharaoh of Egypt, being the greatest grandson of the pharaoh at that time. Not knowing, perhaps, that he himself was of Jewish origin, Moses sometimes visited the pharaoh's buildings erected by Jewish slaves. Moses once saw an Egyptian guard beating a Jewish slave. Unable to bear it, he took a stone and killed him. When this deed was discovered, Pharaoh decided to kill him. So Moses was forced to flee Egypt by Pharaoh's guards. The biblical story goes on to say that Moses came to Midian to a family of nomadic shepherds. There he also became a pastor. Through an agreement with the Midianite priest Jethro. Later, Moses married Jephthah, the daughter of Jethro, who bore him a child. They named his son Gershom. One day, according to the Bible, Moses found a burning fire that did not burn. Moses communicated with God, the only God Yahweh, through this prayer and was given the mission to free the Jews from Egyptian slavery. Pharaoh had died, and his son succeeded him to the throne. God announces to Moses that he will send plagues upon Egypt by the operation of his miraculous staff. Moses arrives in Egypt, where he appears before Pharaoh and asks him to free the Jews from the bondage of Egypt. Pharaoh refuses, denying and despising the God of the Jews. But with power from God, Moses took out his staff, threw it before Pharaoh, and miraculously turned the staff into a serpent. Pharaoh's servants did not allow themselves to be outdone and managed to do the same with their staffs. In this miracle race, Moses' serpent eventually swallowed the other serpents of the servants. But even then the Pharaoh did not allow himself to be persuaded and continued to refuse to release the enslaved Jews. On the contrary, he tormented them with even heavier labor. God then announces to Moses that he will strike the land of Egypt with the ten plagues, or plagues. Okay, that's kind of the biblical story. But there is a very interesting conspiracy theory that tells us that the prophet Moses was nothing but the famous Pharaoh Akhenaten. First, because there are some similarities between Moses and Akhenaten, the Egyptian Pharaoh replaced the polytheistic religion of Egypt with a monotheistic system, elevating the god of the solar disk Aten to the rank of the sole god of Egypt. Many historians and theologians associate Atonism with Judaism, linking the history of Akhenaten's reign with the story of the biblical exodus. Then Akhenaten, like Moses, went into exile outside of Egypt. And thirdly, it is extremely strange how both characters lived in the 14th century BC. Another strange fact is that the cause for which the strange pharaoh died has not been discovered and his mummy has not been found so far. Did he return home after completing his mission in Egypt? Or did he simply disappear miraculously? If you liked our documentary, don't forget to leave a comment, a like and subscribe. Until next time, I wish you a wonderful day with us.